Hello everyone, this is Angela with Creatively Done. Today I'm going to do a 10 by 20 canvas with a split cup in which I've put bronze, black, and copper. Bronze, black, copper. And I have it tilted on an angle, so I should be able to make a big mess here. But we have these 3D printed cups that we're trying. And I thought I would, well, watch, you can watch me pour it all over the, over the thing. It's a little hard for me to hold, but it is a good shape. And these are cups that we will be offering. But as the artist, I get to try them and see how well they work, how easy they are to hold in your hand. This is a little tougher for an older hand, probably easy for, <coughs> excuse me, a younger hand. But I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to let it just drizzle down the center and not go over the back and I'm just going to wiggle as I go so it should, if I hold it up higher, I'll get more feathers if you will. And you have to hold it steady and so far so good, oh I had one plop there. I did strain most of my paints, but these aren't the most expensive paints, so it's a little not too thin, nor not thin enough, so I'm trying to hold this, and like I said, this canvas is on an angle, so hopefully it won't all run off on that one side, so I'm going to try to tilt it a little bit more. higher up you go the more wiggles you'll get and if you want to wiggle it a little bit more you can and I'm trying to do that now I'm not doing the shaky hand thing but I didn't want it to go off to the back of the canvas I wanted it to stay on the canvas and oh, there goes another plop so if you have paints that you haven't strained and Believe me, I thought I had strained these. I'm. Um, this is a. I believe it's a four ounce cup, but I'll double check that. Like I said, I'm getting some nice feathering. I'm trying to wiggle it just a little bit here at the end because it's almost out of paint. This should be enough for this 10 by 20 canvas, and hold it in my hand. It's a little tough to hold, but you have to just hold it steady let the paint pour off. I'm going to come back here with my second hand. If you can see it on camera, I don't think you can, but it's a little tougher to hold. And I'm going to be stopping here real soon. It's not going too far off on the top side, but I'm trying to keep it from going off the edge. It's a little browner than I want it to be, and I'm going to stop and my cup came loose, so now I'm holding it. And what I'm doing now, I had it on some uprights here, this little cups, and I'm trying to keep it from just pouring off the one end, and if you could see that, sorry about the glare, I'm trying some new lights and new cups and old artist, so it gets a little amusing real fast. And we're going to move it back towards the top of the canvas, and then I'm going to stretch it back towards me. And then what I'm going to do after I get it to a certain point that I like, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to stop, and I have it on cup holders, so it should be level. So they're on little cup holders to hold it up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take black paint that I have in a, get this, a sriracha bottle. And I'm going to put it around the outer edge. And um, i, I got to tell you, I really like negative space. I know some people don't, but I do. And um, it's about the only time I like being negative. I'm going to use my torch and 
torch this real fast. There is some, there's a lot of Floetrol in these paints, so you're going to see that bubbling, which it kind of looks nice. And now what I'm going to do is hopefully not ruin the painting, but I'm going to take a palette knife, sit down, take my black paint, and paint the edges. One second to get a palette knife. And then I'm going to put black paint. I'll watch this not come out right now, right? This is a sriracha bottle, see? Nothing fancy. And I'm going to put the black paint. Nope, it's not going to come out of there. I didn't think it would. Because that would be too easy. Anyway, I am just going to open the bottle and pour it around. Hopefully you can still see it on camera. Let me make sure of that because I can overstretch myself, but I want everybody to be able to see it on the, I'll stand up and do this. And I'm going to pour some black paint. And since I have marbles, I'm bound to see a marble too, right? Because I don't want to see that. Let me go around to the bottom and get my other monitor here involved. Let me pull this back just a little bit so I don't touch the edge of my desk. Get some paint there and some paint on this side. Now this is the opposite of what you would normally do. Normally you would flood your canvas first, but you know what? I'm finding that the paint either moves too fast or too slow and it doesn't give you a lot of control. Um, this type of acrylic pouring is much more challenging than just using a paintbrush. Because right now, see, I'm trying to get close enough without pulling too much of the paint. So I have a paper towel that I can kind of wipe my knife off with. I'm trying to get up to and make the edges be black, cover the white, get that brown off there, as long as, as long as the palette knife is black, and go around the edges, and it's kind of like using a brush, the only difference is that um, it's harder, it's kind of, um, well, it's harder for me, so here's the thing. When you're trying this type of painting, and like I said, I'm trying to cover the corners with a dark color and not pull it off where you can see the canvas underneath and get it close enough to the image so I'm not destroying the image that I have here because I really like the shape of it. Kind of looks like a horseshoe, so I'll just drag that up and then clean off the edge of the knife and keep going. There's enough paint on here, but it becomes a challenge when you get, I'm not using the right knife probably, but I want it to look like something is in the air. Now, this is, needs, this needs a little bit more paint here, and if I reach across this, you're probably not going to be able to see, so I'm going to try to just not drop the knife in there. That would be good. So... The split cups are great for getting a design that would take hours and hours to do with a paintbrush. It's um, considered cheating by some, and I consider it brilliant because it's like using different size brushes or finger painting or whatever you want to call it. The instrument that you're using, like I'm using the palette knife in the corner now, is just that. It's just the type of device I'm trying to use to control the paint on the painting. Now, you see I have some edges that aren't really covering yet, but I can go back. I could put more paint on. This level of control, I probably would have been better with a brush, but 
this gives a nice smooth finish. I'm not going to stretch the image in the center off. I want it to look like that. That's what I want. There are others that will stretch that image and have that paint go over the edge. I'm choosing not to do that. Everyone's looks different. They're all amazing. And hopefully someone will like this one too. I do. I like this so far. If I could keep that crisp edge, I'll be real happy. The paint's a little thicker than it should be. But that makes it, it'll level too, because it's acrylic. So I'm gonna see if I can get some of that off there. There we go. Now here is where I don't want it to, I don't want to lose that edge. So just like you would use a paintbrush or a someone who paints with oils would use a palette knife to get closer to the image that they want and then set it the way they want, pull their knife that way. I'm going to try to keep that image a sharp image. Now when it gets a little muddy, let me get another paper towel from down below. When it gets a little muddy at the end, wipe that off so you just have black. And then I'm gonna come back in with my big old bottle of black paint here and try not to, if I had a tip on this, I'd be, i feel a lot safer. So let me see if I can use the smaller one, if, if this will come out can not be, nope, nope, it's not going to want to come out. The tips get gummed up pretty easy. So here goes nothing. I'll pour it off this way. So if it splatters, it'll go onto my tabletop instead of, there we go, that came out pretty even. It's going off to the side. And there is one going off to the side. And now I'm just wasting paint, but I can control that a little bit better and there goes one marble you see the marble where's my tweezers there we go got a big old marble that I use to shake the paint with and actually I'm going to use that see anything that you use to make your painting is what you're making your painting with there are people that just use up oh, and it, now it fell onto the table, so there it can sit. But whatever you use to create your painting, do it creatively. Do it deliberately. Don't worry about someone saying, oh, well, you're not really painting because you're just throwing paint on a canvas. Yeah, I've seen people throw paint on a canvas. And even like this little oopsie daisy that I have right here, because the paint kind of smeared, well, I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit and see if I can get it to behave. And if not, it'll just be one of those little oddities that happen to a painting. Now, I'm going to paint on the sides, but I'm going to do that sitting down. Can't do it on all four sides, but the paint's going to draw off anyway. I just don't want it to pull off the center piece. Now, with the tweezers, I'm going to try to mimic the design that was there so I don't ruin the design. Okay? And now, I'm just going to go around the sides here. There's paint on the table, there's paint on the board, and just paint the sides. This is a stretch canvas. It's not a true gallery wrap, I don't think, because I think the gallery wraps don't have um, don't have staples on the back, but maybe they do. I I'll have to look that up. I'm a self-taught artist. I didn't go to a couldn't afford to go to an art school, but I sure do love to create art, and anyone can do that. Anyone can create art if you are just creative. Just try it. Try something. I'm going to pour some paint right on my palette knife here. If you can see any of it, I, I'm not holding it over the. I'm not holding it over the painting though. Because if I do, 
another marble is going to come jumping out of here. And all I'm trying to do is paint the sides because I do want it to be black. And the paint, it won't make any difference. If I painted this after it was completely dry, it wouldn't make any real difference to speak of. But to me, this is what I was going for. Ah, and I got a whole mess of paint. So let me just, let me just make my, I wouldn't be a good cake decorator, would I? I'd have it all over the place. But, and um, you can't lick the bowl here, so I'm going to try, I'm going to try to just get, keep the paint on the painting. Now, as I go around the sides and I tap it, the reason I'm using this, a lot of people use their fingers, is I really don't like having that much paint on my fingers. But if I scrape along the bottom, it prevents the paint from keep pulling. That much I learned from all the experts that I watch online. And by putting it on these cup holders, I know it's level. I know that it's going to stay put. It's not going to fall. And I'm getting more paint where I don't want on the, on the table, although that's not a problem. Because I have a, I try to recycle all the paper that I can. So I've gotten this waxy paper from a friend. Thank you, Tom, a long time ago, and I'm finally using it. And anything else that I can use that we'll keep, we'll call it upcycle art. Although the name of my website is Creatively Done. Please take a look. I'm new at all the YouTube stuff, so I'm really not an expert at that either, but hey, you could teach an old dog new tricks. It just takes them a little longer to jump off the couch. So let me see if I can move this around. And this one marble is, see, you think I lost my marble, but I found it. It's right here. So let me see if I can move this. If anybody says you lost your marbles. You know. Using marbles in your paint is also a great way of mixing your paints without getting a lot of air in them. Now I'm holding that up and it's moving the actual paint that's on the painting. So I'm going to try to lift this up here. I don't really care about this overflow thing because I've got something underneath it as well. And I'm going to grab a hold of that since it's a nice big mess now and I have black paint all over my hands. Give me 10 seconds to just rinse that off as you admire what it's done so far. And like I said, yeah, you can wear gloves and you can wear gloves and you can do all kinds of things, but it cleans up pretty easy. Acrylic paint cleans up pretty easy. So we're still recording and I'm almost at 18 minutes. So I'm gonna stop this and Take a picture of it when it's done, and it'll be posted as well. All I'm going to do is finish painting off the sides. Thank you for watching. This is Angela with Creatively Done. Go out, create something new, and get your stuff creatively done. Thank you for watching. Bye.